Topology, topology was, was the first thing I studied in mathematics. I was fascinated by this language that you can use to express so many things that you don't usually know. Well, you might know them or have observed them, but you've never tried to express them before because you didn't have the words to do so. Topology gives you a whole new vocabulary which makes excellent sense from the very beginning if you have a penchant for it. Michael Weiss is preoccupied with the mapping and classification of abstract forms and surfaces. A mathematician, he is one of the world's leading experts on algebraic and differential topology. And he dedicated 13 years to the subject at Scotland's University of Aberdeen. One of his outstanding achievements was to prove the Mumford conjecture a mathematical problem that extends into many areas of the discipline. Mathematicians worried their heads about it for more than 20 years. But what actually are the characteristics of topological language? It's a language you can use to orientate yourself in certain fields of geometry. It's firmly based on the language of set theory, which probably people know a bit about from school. But it includes lots more terms. You might know mapping from school too, mapping between two sets, but then you get the term continuity, which requires a lot more, many new abstract definitions. Continuous mapping can be demonstrated by two identical surfaces, for example, a piece of paper and the tabletop beneath it. All the points of the one surface can be clearly correlated to the other. If you screw up the piece of paper and then put it back in the marked area, the points have almost completely changed their position. But there is always at least one point lying exactly where it was before. This is a typical topological proposition because it's an existential proposition. It doesn't tell you where the point is, and it doesn't tell you what the coordinates of this point are. And it can't really tell you that at all because there are so many different ways of making the map, from rectangle to rectangle. Topologists always focus on surfaces. Which ones are the same and which are different? Pyramids, cubes and octahedrons are identical in topological terms because their surfaces can be mapped into one another. What exists inside or outside these forms is ignored. What is decisive is how you can orientate yourself on their surfaces. In the case of platonic bodies or a ball, a two-dimensional coordinate system is sufficient. One of the important themes in topology is to understand certain standard forms we call manifolds. Manifolds are geometric forms in which you can orientate yourself at every place in the coordinate system. The Earth's surface is an example. We manage perfectly well when we travel across the Earth's surface by using the lines of latitude and longitude, i.e. we orientate ourselves using a two-dimensional coordinate system. Apart from the ball, there are other forms which can be classified locally using two coordinates. For example, a cup with a handle or a pretzel. However, a coffee cup is topologically different from a ball because it has a hole. That's why these surfaces cannot be transformed into one another by continuous deformation, unlike a torus, which has a hole like a coffee cup. Apart from two-dimensional objects, topology also works with three, four or more dimensions. We differential topologists want to understand the diversity of these objects. How many of them are there? When we know how many there are, then we can ask how many symmetries each of these manifolds has and similar things. Actually, it's a bit like zoology. These manifolds are objects that effectively lead a life of their own, independent of us, and we investigate them. At the University of Münster, WWU, Michael Weiss is being offered excellent conditions for doing just that. In the context of an Alexander von Humboldt professorship, he is now at the forefront of topological research there.
The Mathematik, uh, is in Münster for mathematics has always been a strong subject at Münster, not only in the field of applied mathematics, which radiates out into many neighboring areas, but particularly in the field of pure mathematics, the fundamental sciences of mathematics. Michael Weiss is a topologist, and this is also an area in which VWU used to be strong. We hope that he will drive this subject and take us into the top international league. In the department, the expert's approach is being eagerly awaited, and Professor Weiss is looking forward to heading a research group once again. He will be able to employ some 15 assistants for several years, and he would like to cooperate with scientists from other fields, like physics. Michael Weiss is always on the lookout for suitable mathematical problems in higher dimensional spheres. Whatever that may be, this was already difficult enough. You know it's difficult? At the beginning, everything's so incredibly abstract, and that's precisely its charm. Later, I realized that abstraction in mathematics isn't all that important anymore, and sometimes I regret it. Sometimes, I'd like a bit more abstraction again.